to say I have been inspired here today. Um, it has really been just wonderful to hear everybody's stories. And I was so inspired that about a half an hour ago, I decided to completely change what I'm going to say to you today. Um, I was sitting there thinking, OK, all these people are up here, and they're talking about their own stories, and it's great. And I'm such a nerd that I just put together this thing about markets and, and, and where we're going with our trends. And I'll do a little bit of that, because I am a nerd, and I think it's really interesting and really, really fun. But I thought, you know what? I'll try to compress that, and I'll share a little bit about how I got here, because I think as uh, Elena had that great timeline up there where it's not straight. My story is so not straight. Um, when I started uh, applying for, for legal jobs eventually, which was a second or third career for me, people would look at my resume and go, you don't make any sense. <laughs> and I said, you know, you had to be there. And if you want to come out and have a drink with me, I'd love to share it with you. And they, they did hire me eventually, so it did work out. And, and so I want to inspire other people to think about where are these options that you can go? So let's we'll take you back. You were theater. I was theater. I was art history, University of Michigan. I graduate. I go. I work for Sotheby's, the auction house. And then I'm running an Asian art gallery, right? Of course, that's why I'm an environmental lawyer today. <laughs> Duh, everybody says. Uh, so there I am. I'm, and I, I'm at Sotheby's. And I go, I said, I run this. My, my early specialty was uh, I specialized in early Chinese furniture, like most of you. <laughs> Again, I would think. Um, so I, I was running this Asian art gallery. And I'm, I get to travel in China. And I'm buying antiques. And I'm having fun. It's great. And, and then the owner of the gallery offers me a partnership. And I go, oh, oh my god, I was having fun. You thought I was serious? I'm like, oh, you, you really thought I was like here to work with you. I'm like, I'm just kind of playing, because this is just fun. I mean, it, so the art world is great. It's really, really, really fun in many ways. But when you run a gallery, mostly what you do is you sell red cabinets to designers. That's as intellectually interesting as most of your days are. Think about that for a while. <laughs> Every day, you sell a red cabinet to a designer, and you feel really good about it. So I thought, OK, that's not going to work. I got to do something else. So I thought, well, why don't I just go take the LSATs just for the heck of it? <laughs> sure. I did. And you know what? They, they came out really well. So I thought, oh, I guess I could do this law thing. That'd be kind of cool. I'll go become a lawyer. So I go to law school. And in my first year of law school, you got to take one elective course. And you got to choose it by a lottery number. And I was 499 out of 500. <laughs> I'm serious. I was. It was 499. When you draw it from the hat, 499. I'm like, I couldn't even be 500. At least I could say I'm last. I'm second to last. I'm not even last. God. So fine. Great. So what's left when you get to 499? Environmental law. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's it. Man, taxes full. Consumers protection, full, everything. <laughs> Environmental, I'm like, oh my god, what am I going to do now? I can't stand, ugh. All right, fine. So I go and I actually, I actually, thank god he said no. I begged the tax lawyer to let me in. I really did. I was like, just come on, one more space. You put one more space there. Because I thought, you know, I, I'm going to have to do my taxes all my life, right? So I might as well learn something useful. Uh, and so couldn't do it. I get into environmental law. And I walk in. This is one of those transformative things. I loved it. I couldn't believe that there was anything that kind of enveloped everything I was interested in. It's policy. It's the environment. It's the way we live. It's how we sustain our world. I mean, it's got all of this stuff. And it's all changing. And it's all, when I was in law school, this is all happening right now. So like, you know, you would say, and even in practicing, you would say, well, how have you done that before? <laughs> Never been done before. So then you get to say, how should it be done? To me, that is great. That is really exciting. Because you get to work with, how do you get, how do you get to the yes? How do you get to accomplish the goals? And, when I, and then now I, I really focus on working mostly with sustainable and renewable energy companies. And so we we'll get to look at all of these challenges that if I ever get to my presentation, I'll tell you about it. But, or we could just talk <laughs> later and be fine. 
I, I got really cool slides, but um, uh, and unfortunately, oh, actually, just uh, pleasure. Don't tell my associates I didn't use any of them. Um, they, they, were, they were working on it all week. That's been bad, but oh well. Uh, you won't tell anybody. Um, so anyway, so, so, what, so what we get to do is is we get to, to look at these challenges and to say, okay, particularly in California today, the places that are easy to develop are developed. Um, it's really, I mean, th th there is no, I mean, I've got one slide here where you show, see all the little dots of where everything is. So, so the low-hanging fruit is all gone. And yet we're given this challenge in California and throughout the country is where we're going to have to have more renewable energy online to be able to meet our RPS goals, to be able to meet our carbon reduction, and just to be able to have a sustainable society. We're really going to have to find a way to do that. But every place that you look now where you have to develop, there's going to be some sort of resource conflict. There's going to be endangered species. There's going to be cultural resources. There's going to be prime agricultural lands. There's going to be a need to run transmission through very sensitive resources to get to that place if that's the right place to develop. So how do we do this? You know, so what, what, what we get to do now and, and I think everybody's gotten a lot more sophisticated. Um, my clients, uh, the, the stakeholders, have all gotten a lot more sophisticated. And what we have to be able to do is to go into these areas from very, very early on and say, when we're in the due diligence phase, let's look at what really are going to be the conflicts, right? And what can we do? Because there's, there's not going to be any way you're going to get there with, with no, I mean, there's going to have to be trade-offs. Right? And so you, but you can't just come in and say, we're just going to do it our way. Because then everybody's going to fight you. And I mean, I actually I do love the lawsuits. It's kind of fun, I have to admit it. I mean, you know, I'm sorry, clients, but it is fun, you know, particularly when you win. It's great, it's really fun. But, but, but what I really like to do is to be able to resolve the problem before you get that far. And so when we are able to go in and say, let's get all the parties to the table. And let's sit down and talk about, really, what is at issue here? What is at stake here? And, and I think when you go in there with that attitude, I think you really can get to yes. Um, I was saying to somebody um, at lunch today, so I, I work for Morgan Lewis, as, as was said. And, and we are we have the most lawyers in the United States. Think about that. Um, <laughs> but also, I have to tell you, we are run by a woman which is really, really cool. Um, she just took over last year. So we are the fifth largest law firm in the world, and we are the largest in the United States, and we're run by a woman. So yay for that. Um, but when you're in this big of an organization, right, you have to deal with like a lot of administrative people. And I have found that when you call them up, the first thing they want to say is no. right? I need this. I need to do this, blah, blah, blah. No. So when I started doing and they, they hated me at first. Now, now I think they like me. Uh, or I think that they like me. It's just as good. Um, uh, you say, I would say to them, OK, I'm going to ask you for x, y, and z. But before I ask you for it, I want to just, let's just get something on the table. Your first impulse is going to be to say no. I know it is. And then I'm going to have to go, yes, and you're going to say no, and I'm going to get my backup, and you're going to get your backup, and we're going to fight. And you know what? No is not going to be the answer, right? Because we're going to get me what I want. And we all know that. So let's just, stop. Let's just skip that first step, right? Let's skip the no. I mean, because you know, again, you may not do it the way I want to do it. I'm going to suggest something, and it may be that the way I want to do it isn't the ultimate way to make it work, right? So, but what I want you to do is to listen to what I need, right? Listen to what, really, what's the core of what I need, and then let's figure out how to get there. And let's figure out how to get there together. And I think, and, and, and so I said, the first time I did this with people, and, and when new people come in, I have to do it again, and it's kind of whatever. Uh, but, but it's the first time you do it, you know what, they still say no. <laughs> the second time, they go, OK, actually, she's right. We didn't end up at no. So let's maybe face And so the third, fourth time, actually, everybody comes in with like a little bit softer walk. You know, like the, the, you're not standing there ready to fight. You don't come in with your fist up. You come in thinking, OK, you know, we're going to have to get to a solution that's going to get us there. And this is the same perspective I try to bring to permitting challenges and to all project challenges is, again, let's think about this. Let's think about 
how we get to what we really need. And it may not be exactly the way we wanted it, and it may not be exactly the way you wanted it, but we can get there, and it's going to be good for all of us. Um, and so that's, that's my story. Um, as I said, I've got these great slides. I will send them out to you. Uh, <laughs> anybody who wants them, email them. They're really cool. It's really interesting. But I, I want to thank you for letting me share this story. Uh, this was really, really fun. Thanks. <laughs>